Rick, could you uh, tell us? I'm over here. I know where you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you are. You first time all year, it won't be a Luca question first? No, no, no. no okay. No worries. Could you tell us how special this night is, not just for you, but for the Mavericks, when perhaps this might be their last home game? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's hard to fathom how big it is, if that is the case. Um, and uh, you know, I, I have I have no idea how emotional it's going to be, um, but I know it will be emotional, and uh, there are some things in store. And so, as we used to say when I was doing TV, stay tuned. <laughs> do you do you remember what Reggie Miller's last game was like at the field post? Uh, well, his situation was slightly different. Um, I don't know exactly when he announced, and we were in the playoffs, and so there wasn't um, sort of this same kind of situation. Um, and, and his last game did happen to be a home game in the playoffs. It was a year that uh, it was the brawl year, and uh, we had uh, recovered from that and ended up with 44 wins and got to the second round. Um, against Detroit of all people and uh, uh, the series went to six games and he was the leading scorer in game six you know he had 26 or 27 points something like that and so even though it was a loss it was it was a triumphant ending for him and you know he, he knew that it was going to be his last year but he had not advertised it so um, there was not this kind of anticipation. Dirk has played almost 800 games for you coming to tonight. And I know that probably all runs together like a little of a blur, but is there any single game that leaps out to you that you always you know, sort of carry in your memory bank? A single game by Dirk that you always remember? Well, it's got to be game six in 2011. Um, and it really was a, a defining game on so many levels um, for the kind of team that we were. Um, and the kind of player that he was. And uh, he had a really rough first half. I think he was one for 12 from the field. Um, Brian Cardinal stepped in, and Dirk had two quick fouls, and you know, kept, us, kept us afloat. We actually had a two-point lead at halftime. Um, and Cardinal had some words of wisdom for Dirk at halftime. Uh, we, were, we were able to get Dirk the first shot of the second half. He hit it and had a brilliant second half to bring home the championship. But it, it, was, <clears throat> it was an example of um, a situation where, you know, the, the goal was there, but there was going to be an obstacle. You know, it was going to be hard. It was, <laughs> it was two quick fouls at the beginning of the first quarter. It was a lousy shooting half. And then he was able to just erase all that stuff and kick ass in the second half. And it was... It was a beautiful, beautiful moment. What do you remember your first Thanks. game coaching Dirk? First one? Um, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think we can get that question. Yeah. Well, I, the first game was an exhibition game. I do remember that. Um, I think we were playing against Washington. He had a very short hair thing going at the time. Um, and I was just, you know, I was just trying to get a lay of the land around here. You know, it's just, uh, you know, Dallas, uh, I was so new. Uh, we had a new coaching staff. Um, still getting used to what Mark was all about. Um, but Dirk, was, Dirk in, in that summer uh, leading up to uh, that first particular game, had, had established that, you know, he was going to be, a constant on an even keel all the time, unwavering, all those kinds of things. Uh, I know he played well in that game. Um, he was coming off of the uh, Olympic appearance by Germany that year. And so, you know, we had kind of watched his um, reps at training camp and stuff. And, uh, but it was pretty clear to me at that time that this guy was an absolute rock in terms of you know, being that guy. What are some things that 
kept you up at night when you were scheming against Dirk before you got here? Well, there are many things. I mean, it was it was him. It was you know him, Finley and Nash together, um, and then their team changed, and then you know uh, they became more defensive oriented and, and and changed their style. You know when Avery got here, um, and so they presented uh, different challenges there. But look, you got a seven foot one guy that can score from any point on, on the floor, I mean, that's a big problem. And so trying to find someone to guard him, <laughs> you know, trying to figure out how you're going to deal with him in the post if he goes in there, how you're going to find him in transition, all those things. You know, when he sets a screen, it's like a double screen on your guys because you, you got to hug him. You know, it's just, it was, a, it, was a, it was a myriad of problems to deal with. And uh, it was very difficult. Where would you rank Dirk on the uh, well, you know, I'd have him up there in the top 12, I think. Um, there was a group, you know, at one point, I think after the championship, there, were, there was a group of guys that were 10 time All Stars, um, league MVP, finals MVP, um, and there were, there were maybe one or two other criteria for, you know, all NBA. Um, and at that time, there were, you know, there were 11 or 12 guys, uh, and Dirk was one of those guys. So, you know, you could quantify it that way. Um, but the thing you can't quantify with, with Dirk is the fact that he has been such a consistent force um, in the modern era um, with limited Hall of Fame help. Now, Jay Kidd was a, was a great player and a Hall of Famer. Um, you know, he played with he played with him. Um, you know, Nash now is a Hall of Famer, but <clears throat> you know he didn't he didn't have um, you know the manpower you know the Hall of Fame manpower that some of the great players in that in that group had. And so uh, you know he really took on a uh, an even greater load than um, the franchise players you know of that era. And he's really been through a couple of years now. So uh, I always thought that was a, you know, a, a real defining thing as to, you know, what his impact was. Um, and I, I don't know if this is still the case, but in the, in the modern era, he was the number two plus minus guy in history, I think maybe behind Shaq or something like that uh, during a 20-year period. So, I mean, that's, that's strong. How would you characterize him as a person and uh, and in your interactions and in the community as well from what you see? Is somebody else asked? You have, you've asked three questions. <laughs> somebody else back there? Okay. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Players have pre-game routine, game day routines, and you certainly do. Did you wake up today with any different feeling? Uh, yes, but... <clears throat> it hasn't completely hit me yet. I'm, pac it, I'm pacing myself. Did you, uh, is that memory serves? I think Kobe got 60 when in his last home game. What do you got? Can you get Dirk off a little bit tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him going. We'll get him going. Rick, have you, have you done anything or would you even want to do anything since you addressed a minute ago how emotional uh, you, you expect it to be? Have you done? Or would you want to do anything to try to ingrain some sense of normalcy for yourself and Dirk and for the team into minute one to minute 48 tonight? Well, if you think about it, I mean, there have been a lot of big games. I mean, I remember two years ago, you know, we're going into the game against the Lakers where, you know, Dirk had this big group of people here from all over the world. They were here for a three-game stretch, you know, for hopefully he would get to – 30,000 while they were here. You know, we got to the last game. You know, it was, um, you know, he had to get 20 in that game to get to 30,000. And so, you know, uh, I remember I, I think I've told this story. I, I took the point guards and the playmakers aside in the morning privately and uh, I said, listen, you fools. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. This, this is going to happen tonight, and you guys are a big part of this. And 
you know, uh, you talk about pressure-packed, emotionally charged situations. He came out at 18 points in the first quarter. And so, um, you know, I remember one time that we were, uh, I think the Rangers were in the, uh, were in the World Series, and I was on a group text. Dirk was going to be throwing out the first pitch that night. For one of the games, it might have been game five or something like that. And uh, somebody had put in there, hey, don't, don't let the pressure get to you. And then uh, he sent back a five, five word response that got no, that nobody else needed to respond to that said, I make love to pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so look, you know, the guys, like Reggie Miller, you know, like like Bird, like Jordan, like LeBron James, like Kobe Bryant, you know, you know, like Dirk. These guys, I mean, this is like their breakfast cereal. This this kind of this kind of situation. I mean, this is what this is what these guys live off of. And so, uh, you know, we'll we'll. Uh, approach this with as much normalcy as we can. Um, and, you know, it'll unfold the way it's supposed to unfold. Can you this describe, the, from a coach's perspective, the impact Dirk's had on the direction of the sport? Well, it's, it's pretty well documented. Um, when Nelly put him at the, you know, at the, at the stretch four position, which was, which was not even a position at the time, but they made it a position, um, it changed the game forever, and born born from that, you know, were a string of guys that that came along, and there were more and more and more of them as each year went along. And now, you know, it's there may be one or two teams that are starting prototypical power forward types, um, but all these guys are shooting threes. Um, you know, like Derek Favors was. Probably the last one, but now he's he's been making threes from the corners for the last two and a half, three years. So it's it's the Dirk effect, you know. It's just uh, it's there. And this is it for Dirk. What are you going to miss most of? Uh, I, I'll miss everything, but you know, the way Dirk approached things, you know, e each day each day was a set of was a set of challenges. You know, it was just uh, there was a there was almost a checklist of things that, that, that he would do to prepare. It was so meticulous, um, it was so precise, um, and yet it was so workmanlike. And you could set you could set an atomic watch to it. Um, and you know, when it came time to throw the ball up, he was going to be ready to play. Um, if he wasn't 100 percent, you weren't going to know it really, because he was going to slug through it and he was going to find a way to make a major impact on that game.